boom, Sean motherfucking Sykes. That's exactly how it's saved on my Google Calendar. Just like that's that. That's what's up. Shit. What's going on, like, man? Nothing much, bro. Just working, working more. Dude, that, I, I feel like that's all you do. But I know. actually, that's not even true, though. I feel like you have a pretty good balance. I feel Absolutely. like I feel like y'all be living it up down there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you uh, you noticed that, bro. I think some people don't. I think. Uh, no, I, I, I definitely have the best balance. Of, I, I we'll go out. I'm the OK. I'll put it this way. I'm the first one at the bar and I'm the first one at the finish line. Like that. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I respect that, though. Like y'all y'all really get after it. I see you training, of course, and then I see you and your girl out having a blast. Oh, Y'all yeah. were just uh, J. Cole concert. Was that a virtual concert or was that a real concert? I couldn't no, tell. No, we were there. It was real. Y'all were there. Yeah, he was J. down Cole's there on the dude. stage. Love that dude, man. Dude. Vibes. That whole album is It's fire. fire. All of his music. I mean, we just, he, he played some classics too. So. Oh, hell yeah. You and, got to. And we were, we were talking about that. We were asking, we were like, man, I hope he plays some classics. I like the J. Cole song, Power Trip. Cowboy. Oh, hey. That's a classic. Yeah. Uh, Cowboy. <laughs> he always does this whenever I'm. All right. Come on. It's whenever you're not it's paying attention birthday. to him. Yeah. Right. Yeah, come yeah, here, it's come his birthday. Here. It's his birthday. He's showing out. <laughs> he's got to. He's he turned out. 13. Shit. Yeah. He's, he's still trucking along, man. He said, hey, I'm still here. I respect it. That's awesome. You also found yeah. out no cancer. That's incredible. No cancer. He just got died. He just got surgery. October 6th and so his his results came back he has no cancer so he had some tumors removed so we got those tested oh yeah dude that's incredible news I love it and uh for the J. Cole's what 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 song did he play last um it was the um the uh the one that he I didn't mean to put you on the spot my bad no I know it's <laughs> it was the very it's the very last song it's like uh I don't know, man. My girl. Oh, hunger, loves hunger on the hill, hunger That's on the hillside. It. Yes, hunger, hunger on the hillside. My, I was about to say, but the thing was, is the way he played it is, hey, y'all, chill out. Um, the way he played it was like he was leaving the stadium, so he was like already walking out, and it came on. So it was like he only got through maybe like twenty seconds of the song. Okay, so it's kind of like a yeah. walk off. Yeah, he was like walking okay. off, telling you know, thank you, Houston. And Hell yeah! How how lit yeah. was a uh, ninety five South live? Shit. <laughs> it was already the place was actually already lit uh where was it at uh, where was it at in houston toyota center oh hey oh yeah hey, okay joe okay, okay jay Cole. yeah see? he sold okay. it out i mean the hell place, yeah dude and and his he had 21 savage open for him so it was already like people were already kind of oh. getting a little 21 oh. savage turned that fucking place up oh, so whenever lit. everybody heard Whenever J. Cole came out and 95 south went on everybody lost their mind so that's what he opened was, with yeah, that's what he opened okay. with. It was, he played it in order, didn't he? He's that's yeah, just, that's just pretty that's much just how he does it. He's that dude gives you every penny that you spend. Oh, like absolutely. he gives it. He like gives it back to you. Like makes the experience incredible. Fuck yeah, dude! So, that's exciting. So yeah, yeah. so I, I, I mean, I peep it though. Y'all, y'all have that perfect balance, or what seems to be that perfect balance. Like you clearly have your goals. This is what right. I want to do. This is what I'm gonna do. This is how I'm gonna get there. But then y'all also live, and I can respect that because I feel like, and that's one of the things that I think a lot of people are drawn to, at least me personally is drawn to your Instagram for, is because um, uh, it doesn't, it's not a facade, it's not fake. Like you're, you're showing the good, the bad, you're talking about your life, you're talking about your dog, you talk about your girl, you talk about y'all living, you talk about your training, the whole nine yards, like everything's in there. And I feel like a lot of times we get so caught up in these people's social media pages where it's just positive 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 they're just in yeah. some other country every single week and it's just not mm -hmm. realistic all those pictures were taken at once and then they post them on a schedule you know and it's just not exactly how they live oh fuck me um they're just not that's not how they live in well the damn right. party foul god damn off the rip um i spilled the beer uh oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um for the fucking lost my train of thought oh yeah so that's why that's why at least i'm personally drawn to your instagram i respect that i respect more authentic authenticity uh, mm -hmm. and i guess that's kind of a good background to tell i don't actually know you personally so thank you for doing this uh that was no cool. doubt man. um what what made you want to do that i just some random ass dude just hit you up on instagram 
I, I, I think it's cool, bro. I mean, I, I see the stuff that you do too. So if, if it was a random dude, he didn't never do nothing. I mean, he didn't, he didn't <laughs> train or work out or nothing. I would have been like, well, what we, we don't have nothing to talk about. We have nothing in common. Yeah, why yeah. would I want to sit down and talk? But you just seem cool, man. Same thing. Like your Instagram's cool. Your, um, the podcast thing's cool. I think more people should, should do podcasts, but I think you got in at a good time. You have, you have a good podcast going, um, chill so I, I mean i don't mind doing things like that i think it's i think it's cool at the end of the day if i have time so i appreciate well, that man and i appreciate you taking out time of your schedule on this wonderful friday night uh yeah. and so i appreciate you doing that uh and let's let's get into it so introduce yourself talk about what you talk about you know what it is that you do and then we'll kind of go from there all right well my name is sean sykes i uh have a little private gym in san antonio um i do triathlon I'm new to triathlons but that's like my new thing that's what i do I, um, I train crazy all different types of way yoga i mean whatever you want to do i think i can do it so i'll do it um and i just try to to make you know i try to stamp myself into the fitness scene and do my thing so um yeah i mean that's that basically sums it up i like to work hard i like to be about it i'm, I'm very serious about my training i'm very serious about training people um i love working with with one-on-one -on -one clients i love running group classes i like to um basically my life revolves you know around fitness so oh yeah man yeah. And, you, and you definitely you it's no bullshit you're no, about that life yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> if it's not I don't want none of that bullshit, none of that cookie cutter bullshit. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't like none of that shit. Don't come to my gym and whip out your phone and take pictures in the in the mirror and shit when you're with me. You know, work out first, then you can take as many pictures as you want. But when we're training, let's let's work. Cause, Hell yeah, dude. You know, there's a lot of people who uh, get angry or upset whenever I talk about certain people like quit. You know quit pretending out here and stuff and they're like well why are you knocking somebody else's hustle you know like that that's what i get and i'm like dude because it's not a hustle if it's a con oh yeah you know what i'm saying don't don't ask somebody to do 50 burpees you never done 50 burpees before you're down there screaming in their face telling them to hurry up and go 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 i'm like you don't even know what that dude feels like have you ever done 50 burpees it hurts <laughs> it, but yeah it does hurt <laughs> yeah Fun fact like, dude, hey, if you've never done 50 burpees yeah. <laughs> yeah so um yeah i try to keep it as real as possible as far as that goes um yeah that's that's how i get down out here Dude, you you and my uh, strength and conditioning coach also the owner of the crossfit gym that i go to y'all two together would be it, it. this dude is pound for pound probably the strongest dude i've ever met okay he's an absolute freak uh, yeah. uh dude was over overhead squatting 325 for two yeah, I can't do that. Uh, he, yeah, <laughs> he, do he's that. uh he's one ninety five. Okay, six Shit. six foot one ninety five. Just, but you Beast. you if you looked at him, you'd be like two two thirty two four. Like where where is it? Uh, right. He just, he stays lean as hell. Ah, fucking dude, he's he's yeah. an absolute freak, man. And so like the two of y'all together would be something to watch. Yeah. Uh, what was that row? You said he he wanted to ch challenge like a row the, machine. Challenge. The row machine would be fun for y'all fun to watch because his power output is insane and your cardio is insane and i would yeah. love to, i would just i would geek out i don't know yeah. <laughs> i don't know if he would even be yeah. interested but i would geek the fuck out watching it i'd be like this is incredible yeah uh, i mean he's just he's in in incredible shape but he's exactly what you're talking about he yeah. lives up to that shit every single day that man is in the gym running the gym and working out every day he's always there um He's always doing something, whether he's videotaping himself doing certain banded exercises. He runs a banded program okay. online, and then he does online coaching, um, and then he coaches clients in the gym as well, and then he coaches the co CrossFit classes as well. He does all the programming for the gym, uh, whether you're doing bodybuilding, CrossFit, whatever. He does all the programming for the most part, and then there's other coaches there that do uh, some programming as well, and uh, yeah, I mean, he's just he's exactly what you're saying just about it uh um, yeah he grew his instagram over covid by doing the banded workouts worked out very well for him grew his grew his instagram by about forty thousand followers Jeez. just yeah just through covid doing What's banded workouts um austin cochran uh, okay. i'll send you his instagram after this 
Yeah, yeah. Has uh, he ever done like any like High Rocks events or? Um, he's done. He's done. Um, I f- man, he hasn't competed in forever. So he wanted to go. He wanted to do CrossFit and compete okay. in CrossFit, but he started running the gym and realized that he didn't have the time to train that he wants to and run the gym to the extent that he wants to. Well, the gym it's is hard. the gym is his like his everything like right he gives everything to that gym the programming the everything he's constantly working on it constantly trying to evolve throughout all of covid he kept that place literally like he got it tested twice throughout covid yeah we could we could have ate off the dumbbells oh yeah oh like yeah. He, he, he keeps that place i know how that is spotless yeah. dude yeah uh ex-marine just the whole nine yards uh he's right. just about he's just about that life and uh, I would geek the fuck out watching y'all two go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I respect that, man, because I know how it is. I, I, I wish I could sit, uh, I could sleep in all day, wake up, train, go to sleep, wake up, train. But I have right. a gym like he does, yep. and yep. It's, you can't, you got, and that's my baby, man. I love my little spot and my gym, and I'm the same way. Um, when COVID was big time and everybody was worried about cleanliness and, and keeping it clean, even now, like I, I, first off, it wasn't about COVID. It was about staff infection. Sure. Sure. So I could care less about, I, I was just like, well, whatever you get it. Don't come in, whatever, you know, but I was like with, with staff infection and other things that can be caught in the gym like that. No. So we, we keep it super clean, but I know what he's going through. And, uh, I know that it's hard because you want to train at an optimal level because you still want to keep that kind of like, you yeah. know, this is what I do. But whenever you're running the gym, that is like optimal, you know, like you're you're the man and and it's it's up to you to keep everybody fit. And the, and the gratification you can get from finishing an event or winning an award is nothing like the gratification you get when you change people's lives uh, in a positive way. So, yeah, that that's a good way to put it, too. And it was another cool thing, too, on for his part. Uh, I had him on the podcast. And we had talked about it during COVID, the majority of us, even though he was shut down for that six week period, seven week period, Mm -hmm. um, even through that period, the majority of his members kept their membership. That's how much we just love that gym. Like the everyone that goes there, we just do it. It's just, yeah, the competition is there. The athletes are there. So Bethany Shadburn used to train out of there. She uh, she's a big CrossFitter. Um, She finished she finished uh, eighth a couple years back and then 16th and then this year she didn't get to compete unfortunately because she ended up getting COVID a day before the games fucking unfortunate wow Uh, that sucks and she was on pace for a podium this year like she was she was crushing it but uh so the athletes are there um but it's like you said so how did you how did you get into starting this gym like when did that come about um so I've been training for 10 years. So uh, I was at Gold's gym first and I was a personal trainer at Gold's and it just so happened. I was making protein shakes actually. And I was trying to get my gym certification Uh, and I was, you know, 20 years old, but it just so happened or 21, 22, just so happened that um, I was training at Gold's at probably the only time in the history of Gold's gym that they had the trainers that they had at that time. Like all the guys there were older than me, but they were all very professional. They were like, they taught me the way okay. basically. Um, and I was such a high strung dude and always just like amped up and all like, you know, trying to be the best trainer and I can't screaming tell. and being I can't loud. Tell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like with the best crew of trainers you can get. And so I was at Gold's for like a year and then I left Gold's and started doing my own thing with one of my, my good friends. His name's D Anderson. He had a place called big D's fitness where he sold fitness equipment. I trained in the back of the store using fitness equipment that he would sell uh, and bring in. (laughs) So I was just training people in the back of a fitness equipment store. Right. And then, um, I eventually moved downtown. Um, Once I moved downtown, I was, you know, I was training out of my little luxury apartment complex. They call them luxury apartment complexes. They're not like I was not, I didn't have luxury apartment money, right? It was (laughs) bullshit apartment complex downtown trying to, trying to, you know, show out. And so then, you know, um, my girlfriend and I got together and we moved to a little bit better of a complex that had a better gym. And I started training people out of that gym. How how Um, was this? This was probably like four, four years ago. Okay. And so I'm training people out of this gym and um, 
this gym hires a fitness company to come in and like run their little apartment gym. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I see how it's going, you know? So anyways, um, I'm like looking for another spot and I'm like, I've got to find somewhere else to train or I got to keep training here. And the company was in my way. And, and just so happens one of my clients knows this guy who literally is right down the street from my apartment complex and has a building. And uh, my buddy was like, hey, man, you should go check out the basement of that building. It's like nothing there, but you should go look at it. So I went and looked and, and the owner was just, man, this guy is the most ridiculous dude. I mean, I hate to talk about him like that, but damn, my landlord's a trip, dude. You know, so <laughs> why is that? I, why is that? Like, man, this dude will go from like talking like he's your buddy to like cussing you out in the oh, parking zero. lot for leaving gum in the parking lot or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> zero to so, 100. Just... Yeah, zero to 100. He has no chill. So he's a fucking crazy <laughs> ass. And uh, and I was like talking to him and he was like, yeah, I think you can do a gym. And I think he thought that my idea of like a gym was I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put some fucking bands and some dumbbells on some concrete and just tell people to come in this room and work out. You know what I'm saying? Um, but then everything just started coming together and, and he gave me this little bitty space. Like I'm talking, man, this shit is probably the size of like, or like it's small. Okay. And, uh, I was like, I'll take it. And I was just like, it's a private personal training studio. It's my time. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And so, <laughs> um, I start moving stuff in and I don't really have a lot of equipment. I have zero money, right? Like I'm not making shit. So I'm, I'm, I'm making enough to pay my bills and maybe take my girl out to eat once a month. Okay. You know what I'm okay. saying? So I'm barely making anything, but I'm hustling. I'm trying, I'm pushing myself. I'm trying to do better. I'm making connections. I'm making contacts. I had met one client who he wanted to start training with me five days a week and he could afford it. And he like loved the training and he kind of boosted me and start introducing me to other people like that. Oh, hell yeah, um, Shout so out it to kind him. of hit it off. So right around the time I met him and I was training him, that's when this gym kind of came along. Um, and so then I started moving stuff in and, and uh, I signed a little one year lease. And before that year was up, literally four months into me owning this little closet space to train my clients out of in the basement. Um, I went and got, a little SBA loan and was like, oh, I'm going to try. And so I expanded my space in the basement and made it even bigger and made it like, I added like turf. I mean, I added all kinds of stuff And true story. There was a gym in Austin. I don't, I don't actually, I'm not even going to say Austin. I don't know exactly where these mirrors came from, but the gym supposedly shut down a client. I was training at the time. Her dad was in the construction business. And this gym shut down because the trainer supposedly shot himself in the gym. So he had these mirrors, right? And my client went and took the mirrors and stored the mirrors for like the last three years before I got this little gym and was like, I think your trainer is going to own a gym one day. I'm going to hold these for him. And so the mirrors, which are extremely expensive, yes. were free, but yes. there's, there are these big, beautiful mirrors in my little basement space. So it was great. Like I was like, oh, that worked out perfectly. Well, um, so yeah, so this place starts looking like a crazy ass, real legitimate gym, just like you like, you know, and then I'm like, oh, wow. So I start getting rogue equipment, ski machines, row machines, squat racks, like leg presses, echo bikes, bike ergs, GHD machines, dumbbells. And I just like build out this place, put some art on the walls, put a couple quotes on the wall. And then it's like, boom. And then it's like the fucking atmosphere down there is like, like we set it off with the tone of the, the gym is like, when you walk in, you're like, fuck, the only way I'm getting out of here is to fucking work, yeah. like to push myself and work. Like that's like the atmosphere. And I mean, there's people who've never been in the gym before in their life that come down there and they're like, it, they're, they want to work out because the space, they, they say it feels like it's like an anxiety blanket. Like my number one rule is, and I know I'm kind of rambling and I do that Not, a lot. Hey, I got some dude, ADHD, go, but go my number it, one man. rule is, uh, uh, mind your own fucking business. That's, that's the rule. And whenever somebody's like, Hey, that person didn't wipe down. I'm like, okay, result back to rule. Number one. And don't, <laughs> don't come at me with this shit. Mind your own fucking business. Hey, that girl over there is wearing shorts that are too short for her. Hey, Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nobody gives a fuck. Mind your own fucking business. You wouldn't care if she had too short of shorts on, if you had minded your own fucking business, you know what I'm saying? uh, or you, <laughs> You know, so that's kind of like the vibe in the gym. So people can come in there and just be themselves. That guy's crouching yeah. in the corner. Hey, guess what? But if you mind your own fucking business, 
you wouldn't even pay attention to him grunting because you would be working out and paying attention to what you got going on. You know, so that's kind of the 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 vibe and everybody loves it. People people love to come down there and work out and train. We train at a super high level down there. Well, some of us and the others are training to be at a super high level, um, but they're not right now. So if they're watching this, y'all aren't at a fucking super high level yet. Y'all need to get y'all's ass back in that gym. For real. And y'all know y'all yeah. are too. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Cowboy. No. Come on, man. Sorry, my dog. I love it, dude. Yeah. I love it, man. I I see videos of you down there that that it, it it's it definitely looks like a spot that you want to be at. If you're trying to really put in work. Off on me first. Can you hear oh, me? Yeah. Hold on once you oh. cut out. Okay, you're good. Good. So uh, yeah. I was saying that spot down there, it it looks like a spot you want to put in work. I can see what yeah. you're saying just from the videos. For one, yeah. it's dope that it's in a basement. Like the fuck? Like right. that's Nobody already knows it's there. That's already yeah. cool, right? Mm -hmm. It's like this little hole in the wall. It's like this hole in the wall joint that you find for 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 restaurant, and you're like, this right. is the spot that nobody yeah. knows about. Mm -hmm. This is the spot, and you just walk yeah. in there, and the vibe is dope. The energy yeah. is dope. Everyone in there is getting after it. They're putting in the work. Like that's cool. That's yeah. cool, and then it's something that you can say that you created. Yeah, yeah, from the ground up, literally. Oh yeah, dude. Dust. It was, it was supposedly haunted before I got down in there and I don't believe in ghosts. So it was haunted. And I was like, well, if there is a ghost in here, they better fucking be on their grind. They be putting in that they work. Better, they better be putting in that work, <laughs> wiping up after themselves and shit right? when they're done too. Right. They so, better be white, hey, wipe dumbbells just like everybody else. Yeah, exactly. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's a cool spot, man. It's in an old ass building in downtown San Antonio and nobody knows where it's at. It has no name. There's no name to the build. People can call it whatever they want down there. Um, but it's it's one of the, it's definitely changed a lot of people. It's helped a lot of people. It's like a place of refuge. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like, I don't allow kids in that shit. So we it's might lose a bunch of customers. who's like, oh, I don't know. We have any place. I don't, I don't know. It's make adjustments, not excuses. I don't know what to tell you. You sh Nobody asked you to have kids. You know? <laughs> Yo, put, we, hey, leave them at home. Put them, put, yeah. put them three. Um, they'll be fine. They'll be fine at home. <laughs> they'll be fine. <laughs> Tell them don't open the door for no, nobody. You good. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, them. you know, and, and that's not entirely true. Like, if, if somebody does have a kid, I I'm know. like, if, if your kid behaved, you know, if your kid's behaved, have them sit in the corner, put them on an iPad or some shit, you know, and yeah. So... <laughs> But we don't discriminate against everybody. Everybody's welcome to come in. So. Of course. I know you just, you talking shit. Yeah. I do that a lot. <laughs> get I like hyped to do up. that, man. Get yeah, hyped I, 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 up. Yeah. You get me all amped up. Yeah. Like, shit. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to let, I'm going to, I'm going to force all my people to watch this. So Dude, that's, hey, that's the best way to do it. Get hyped Public up. Public service announcement. <laughs> I, I mean, that's the, I don't know. That's the best. I think that's the best way to do it. Like this whole uh, new NFL rule with the taunting, fucking garbage. I hate it. In between yeah. that that sixty minutes, right? Sixty minutes. Mm -hmm. like sixty minutes. Yeah. In between that sixty minutes, talk all the shit you want. Yeah. Once that These clock hits zero, to hurt you, man. right? <laughs> yeah. Shit, right. Once yeah. that clock hits zero, go shake the hands. Yeah. That's how it goes. Like that. Yeah, I agree. That's just how it goes. Like when we're in the gym, in between that wad or between that workout or whatever we're doing, I'll be talking shit. It's no I different. Love it. It's no difference when, when we're sparring. I'm going to be talking yeah. shit the whole time. The whole time. Yeah. The whole time. Like, <laughs> there's a minute rest. There's a minute yeah. rest. And if, and if the next person ain't ready to start, when that bell goes off, I'm talking shit. Because I can't, I'm personally in PT more than I'm in the gym now. Like I'm, I haven't been able to train to the extent that I was pre-COVID since pre-COVID. Um, so if if my cardio is holding up, then y'all need to get your ass up. Like that's yeah, I'll, I'll right. be talking mad shit all through sparring. But then after sparring, it's all love. It's all like love. That, yeah, that's the best way to do it. In my opinion, I think that's the best. I, I think agree. that's the best. I feel vibe. it's disrespectful if if nobody's talking shit. I I agree. Like if if you like almost in a way not not to like talking about not, during a workout, not, not belittling them or right. Not like hey fat boy, come on. Not not. Not that kind of shit talking. It's more of like yeah. a, it's more like what I was saying, like a, a like, hey, right, y'all, y'all not tired. Like that kind of shit talking. Like you're yeah. not tired. Hey, you're not tired. Come on. Yeah. Like good. It's good because that's, that's like believing in somebody. Like, come on, you, you can go harder. Like, 
it's it's disrespectful to yourself not to say something sometimes because it's like you're not you, like I, and I tell my clients this all the time I'm like you should believe in yourself more than I should believe in yourself yeah like you should like grab the bar and be like okay five fucking more you know what I'm saying like and then like convince yourself that you have five more and then do it so there's times my clients will do like banded lateral walks and their fucking glutes are on mm. fire yep. and I'm like okay, this is the fourth or fifth set of these already and they're doing them. And on the third set, they stopped twice. On the fourth set, I say, hey, we're doing this down and back. You're not gonna negotiate with yourself. We're going down and back. You're not gonna stop one time. And I tell them that. And then they go down and back and they don't stop. I said, what's the difference between the fourth, the third set and the yeah. fourth set? Why'd you stop twice in the third set? You're more tired in the fourth set. I said, because you made that deal with yourself. You chose, you, you, you put it in your head that you were about to do that one thing and you weren't going to stop until you did it. And then you proved it to yourself. That goes a long way in the gym. That goes longer than losing five pounds. That goes further than gaining some muscle. That like deal you just made with yourself was like almost a, an agreement. And now you trust yourself even more in that agreement. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's Hell like, yeah. Make sure that you're not, you're, you're talking shit to reassure yourself that you have self-belief, like, and people mistake me talking shit all the time. It's, I believe in myself. I, there's not very many people when it comes to high intensity interval training. Like, I'm not talking about Ironmans because I'm never going to talk shit to a pro in an Ironman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those dudes will absolutely torch my ass. That's all, what they do. Or I, I'm not going to talk shit to a, a Olympic lifter or a bodybuilder like in that that way but when it comes to high intensity interval training i'm talking my shit <laughs> and i truly believe i'm one of the best in the world at least top 25 in the world in high intensity interval training like if you put me next to another dude and you give us 10 things that we have to do quick and who can get through it the fastest like thousand meter ski two thousand meter row 50 burpees 100 jump squats and whoever gets to the finish wins. I believe I can compete with anybody in the world. And that's why, Cowboy. And yeah, and that's kind of the attitude that I bring into my gym. And then I instill that, try to instill that attitude into, into a lot of my clients. Um, oh, yeah. Because I believe like self-belief and people think I, I sound cocky or I have an ego. And if, if they think that, that's great. I'm glad that you think that I, I'm cocky and I have an ego. So those things are those things are always so misconstrued. Yeah, there. I I don't take it that way at all. Like when someone is has a personality as your such, I take it like how you just said, like you believe in yourself, you believe you're the best. Um, but you're going to be someone who if someone asks you a question or something, you're going to answer the question or just right. even doing this. You don't even know me. I can already tell that you're a humble person it's not so yeah. much because uh, i don't know about you but me personally i'm my biggest critic i'm insanely insecure about certain things like yeah. i believe in myself or like other people think that i'm like i can be super cocky or arrogant but it's kind of the same thing that you're saying it's just like i like you said earlier how i shouldn't believe in you more than you believe in yourself I think that right. everybody I always try to push everyone to their absolute limit. Especially like we got uh well the no we had a tournament coming up in November and I don't get to compete unfortunately due to work. And yeah. uh so my goal or my job is to make sure everybody's ready. Right. Uh, they pretty much call me the juggernaut at the gym. Um I'm, I'm face for I'm face rolling. Like I'm in your mouth all three minutes of the round, like I'm in your face. And my technique's not the best. It's not going right. to be the best, but I'm going to be in your mouth the entire time. I'm going to test you all three minutes. I'm going to push you. And so I take it upon myself to help these guys and girls get ready for their fights, even though I don't get to compete. Right. Uh, and I get, per I personally get more satisfaction from that than me when I won in April. I get more satisfaction from pushing these people to get them ready and see them go out there and perform. That, that gives me more satisfaction than going out there and doing it myself. Yeah. Um, and I would imagine when you see someone crush one of your thousand ski, thousand row, thousand meter run, when they crush one of those workouts and they, and they, they put up a good time, I, I would imagine that gives you a pretty good, pretty good yeah. satisfaction compared to just doing it yourself. Cause you know, you can do it yourself. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, it's like, I just created this workout and threw it on the board and then talk shit behind it. <laughs> and now people are coming in and they're putting their times on the board and it's not an official sanctioned thing. I just created this shit. And now we're putting times and everybody takes. So our MPT PTT challenge is like the most serious challenge in the gym, taking the, Ex- the most explain serious. That. Explain that. So I created this challenge, which is it's a thousand. It's one mile on the echo bike. It's a 1000 meter row or, and then a 1000 meter ski. And then it's seven, uh, 0.75 on the echo bike, a 750 row and a 750 ski. Then it's 0.5 on the bike, 500 row, 500 ski, 0.25 on the bike, 250 row, 250 ski. That's it. Whoever gets done the <laughs> fastest wins. So you're pulling that thing or you're pulling down on them skis. Whoever gets done the fastest, that's the champ. Your lungs are on fire. Your body's on fire, but I have two of each in the gym. So you're, if you're head to head, then you know that that dude's right there pulling whatever he's pulling. So it's just like a battle, right? Yep. Um, but you also can see the board because it's right in front of you and in front of all those machines is the board, which you can see like, and then the clock is right next to it. So you can see like, oh, I'm in 13th place or, oh, I'm probably going to finish in the top 20th or top 30. Um, and there's 40 times on that board already, like close to 40 times on that board. And um, oh, yeah. we take it so serious because the MPTPTT stands for most people too pussy to try. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, so everybody's done it and we take it so serious in the gym and we talk so much shit and, uh, yeah, it's, it's fucking great. And I really would love for that event to catch fire and to go viral and people start posting times all across the internet, because oh, I, I think, think it's a dope. great, it's a great circuit for anybody. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. Yeah. Hey, I'm not, I'm not bullshit. I'm going to come. I'm, I'm coming down there one. Day. I'm coming down there. I'm the I, same. I, I want to come to where y'all are at too. Hey, man. you, Hey, you're more than anytime. Uh, yeah. Just let me know. We'll get you in there. Like you'll, you'll love it too. You go, you do a session with a good bodybuilding Olympic lifting session with Austin. And yeah. I definitely, put him through, not put him through a good. Strong. Yeah. So I'm not very strong, but, uh, I'm very versatile. So yeah, I mean, um, I still seen you power clean 225. You're still doing okay. It's decent. Yeah. Yeah. You do it. Right. That feels heavy for me. That, that I mean, with all the cardio I've done for the last two years, I'm trying to learn how to be in and in more have more endurance and do longer cycling and, and swimming. Um, I've definitely not kept up with the strength sure. side as much, which this time around for all my events, I'm lifting a lot more. I'm I'm a lot okay. more programmed this time around. So I've definitely learned how to do some of this stuff and now you know, well, I've learned that I need to do more of this stuff, not necessarily how to do it. So sure, sure. I'm going to try to keep as much of my weight, this go around as possible, as much of my strength, this go around as possible and just train more endurance as well at the same time. So I'm trying to make it all happen. Oh yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, you know, are you familiar with Ross Edgley? Egley? No, I'm not. So he, he you remind me of him. So he's a um, he's an endurance athlete who is jacked, probably okay. two twenty five, two thirty. I'll send you his Instagram after this as well. So he wrote a book not too long ago. He swam around Great Britain. Hold, let me hold on, let me hold on. Let me pull this up real quick. Let me pull this up for real quick before I be talking out my ass. Um, La Ross Edgley swam Great Britain. Um, yes. So he swam around the entire Great Britain mainland. Um, hold on. Uh, let me find his Instagram real quick. I think it says the exact distance on his Instagram. Uh, blogging. Fuck off. Um, let's see. Uh, so this guy is an absolute freak yeah yeah so 1780 miles he has the world nuts he has the world's largest swim and uh when i send you who he is and you see the uh you see how much muscle he has for as incredible of an endurance athlete is he's an absolute freak um 
And it's kind of what you remind me of is a very similar to this guy. So I'll, I'll send you his Instagram. You might get a good kick out of this. Uh, but yeah, dude, he's 1,700 miles. That's unheard of. <laughs> uh, that's incredible. <laughs> like, I, what? I don't know anybody on the planet. That's dude, fucking crazy. If anyone, if anyone listened to this, if you swam an 800 meter, you know how ridiculous it that hurts. Is. 800 meters is a long Dude. way. So when you people are like, oh, swimming is meters. terrible. Yeah, no, it's a when you look at 800 meters in front of you, that shit looks far. Like, damn, I might drown and die swimming that Dude. 800 meters. It doesn't so, matter. It does. I feel like it doesn't matter how good of shape you're in. If you can run all day long, and then someone tells you, all right, sprint this 800 meter swim. No, you're dying. No. No, if you don't swim. If you don't swim like that, you don't. No, there's no. nothing. You don't stand a chance. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't stand a chance, no. dude. Swimming you're is so hard. You're gonna be in that hard. water for a minute too. Yeah, you're gonna be breaststroking. You're gonna yep. be back, back stroking. You're gonna <laughs> doggy paddling, trying to keep your head above water and shit. Yeah, I'm dude. telling you, man. People don't realize that shit because they don't get out there and swim. They don't understand yeah. 1,700 miles. That's how far is the fucking moon? I don't know. <laughs> like, you gotta get a. <laughs> How far uh, is, I mean, damn. I think it's a little bit. How far is the moon? Hold oh, on. Fuck. Is it even with? It's like <laughs> two hundred thirty-eight thousand miles. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying the motherfucker's <laughs> still in the digits with a comma. The motherfucker's <laughs> got a comma in the digits, like <laughs> facts. I facts. have no comma in my my swim digit, so I'm I'm fucking maybe I'm at maybe eight miles in total training. Like, dude, that's like, still absurd though. So it I took him, can't. it took, uh, it said he spent five months at sea. Uh, so he was on the Joe Rogan podcast. He tells the entire story. He said that he, he, uh, he swam, uh, I think a couple miles with a jellyfish stuck to his face and he didn't notice. Fucking A. Yeah. It was a jellyfish stuck to his face. Uh, he, oh, okay. yeah, he wrote a big, he wrote a book. It's called the great British swim. Um, uh, anyways, but <laughs> he just that's that's kind of what you remind me of because he's this because you're you're still in incredible shape you're still jacked you're still what yeah. 205 uh right now today i weighed in at 198 so okay, i'm a little so, light but so 198 yeah. you're six foot five ten six one six yeah. one so yeah. you're still you're still a big dude yeah I'm, I'm i'm lean i i usually walk around at like 203 but this week has been intense and i it's literally i'm dehydrated today so Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what you're training for. Let's actually let's well, first off, let's talk about what you did in what April. Yeah. So it was my first time. So I come from my background uh, in fitness. So my mom was really into fitness early and kind of okay. had me be like a boy's what, boy. What she football, do? Sports. Um, she's passed away now. So oh, she, she but she was like she she cycled all the time. I mean, okay. that was her thing. She would like cycle to work. We, okay. did, we didn't have much as a kid. So, so she would have to cycle to and from work and she did it cause she had to go to work. She wasn't doing it. Cause she was like me where I'm like out here, just like enjoying a nice scenic ride and sure, some leg sure. work in, you know? Um, so she kind of had me grow. So I played football and have been like a very explosive sprinter my whole life. Okay. So like, um, in high school, I ran the, the 400 meter dash, um, I always had a really fast 40 time. I was always, I was a wide receiver and played a little quarterback in high school. Um, and just was more of a sprint guy. Like if you told me to run 800 meters, I'd laugh in your face. I'd be like, we don't run that far. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, far. I don't, I don't need to run that far. I, I don't need to go around twice. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. run once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it was never my thing. Like endurance was never my thing. I never liked the way my lungs being like that and my heart for that long. I just never liked it. Uh, it sure. was not enjoyable to me. And also my mindset would get impatient with I, like, I, I would just be that. like, I can't be here doing this one thing. I need to do something else, you know? And, um, as I got older, I just, one day I was just like, what the fuck? You know, I'm tired of doing this high intensity interval training and I'm tired of doing sprints when I go to the field and playing football, I'm always getting hurt and shit. And, uh, so I yeah, was just strange. like, you know, I, after I opened the gym, um, I was like, I'm going to do an Ironman. I just thought about it. my client, Denora, actually, who I talked about on my Instagram, she was doing Ironmans and then she got hit by a truck and started. Tr yeah. So I said this on my Instagram today. My client, Denora, is such a mentally tough 
human being. And she was training for Ironmans and she was doing Ironmans with her sister, Janie, who are both special, just love these people to death. Um, and they were just, I was just like amazed all the time. I'd been training them for so long and I was always amazed because they'd be like, I'm doing a 70 mile race. And I'm like, what? Like I couldn't fathom. Cause I'm like, dude, I might whoop somebody's ass in a 100 meter dash <laughs> and do a power clean and then a bear crawl, <laughs> but I'm not gonna fucking do a 70 mile race. That sounds absurd. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just like, what? And then I, it just got more and more impressive to me. And then they would do them and then they'd post them. And then they would be like receiving all this glory. And I was like, fuck, I, I got to get in on some of that glory. Like, I'm like, so after I opened the gym, I was like, how, so I'm rambling, but I'm going to go back real quick. God, when I started, my Instagram was very bland when I started my Instagram. Okay. And then I wasn't getting any clients. Nobody was hitting me up really. I was doing my own thing. I just left Gold's gym. Um, and so one night I was just broke as fuck and my elect my lights were off in my apartment because I couldn't afford the electric bill. And my phone had a little bit of battery. And so I set my phone up and I just practiced a handstand for like three or four hours. And I didn't know how to do a handstand because I never did any of that gymnastic shit growing up. It was always just like smash a motherfucker and catch a pass and score a touchdown. And so I just like practice and then I just posted myself. I, I had a little battery. So finally, when I learned the handstand, I taught myself in like four hours. I just posted myself, do it. And then the next morning I got a client who bought 20 sessions off of me off of that video. And from there, it's not like my life got better. It probably got fucking worse and I got even more broke, but I would just start posting these crazy videos of me doing handstands and backflips and all kinds of Superman pushups because I had the explosive ability. And I was like, these things, I would see other guys on Instagram do them. And then I would just take what they would do from each little section and pull it into my own video and do like four different things. And then that kind of got played out when I started my own gym. And I was like, I got to separate myself from all the basic trainers in San Antonio again. So then I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do an Ironman. I told my girlfriend, I was laying in bed and there was no reason for me to fucking say I was about to do an Ironman. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Nora's training for an Ironman. She just got hit by a car, a truck. Literally, this truck was flying down the road and it hit her while she was on her bike and it absolutely crushed her. I mean, broke her body and bones all up. I mean, surgeries, ICU, um, you know, life. I mean, her life was on the line, you know what I'm saying? And she survived it, got out of it, started training with me again, built herself back up and is next weekend is doing a full Ironman, 140 miles. Fuck yeah, dude. And I'm like, so back then I was like, if she's training again and she's able to push herself like this and she's able to move again and still survive and she's brave enough to get back, I'm like, I got to do a fucking Ironman. So it was like 2019 of November of 2019. I just told my girlfriend, we were laying in bed. I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do a fucking Ironman. She's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, like, I think I'm going to do a fucking Ironman. And she was so supportive. She's like, I'll, I'll buy it for you for your birthday. Cause my birthday was March 27th and the Ironman was April 11th. Oh yeah. Okay. And so, um, I'm training, but like four miles to me felt fucking brutal running four miles <laughs> like i was like oh i definitely don't do this shit so uh, i got i got a bike um my my <laughs> denora's husband so her husband uh sold me train or traded me sessions for his cannondale endurance you know cycle bike oh yeah okay and so i'm like you know learning the bike and i'm like thinking i'm doing badass and then i go check like real people's times and stats on runs and bikes and i'm like oh my god i'm a slow bitch you know what i'm saying and and so um <laughs> i'm training my ass off training my ass off and i'm you know i'm doing like a 15 mile bike ride or a 22 mile bike ride but i'm scared to go like that long distance because my body can hardly hold what i was doing then and then boom january 26 kobe died and my <laughs> iron man's april april 11th or it was april 5th that year it was april 5th that year so kobe died and i was like such Kobe was like my dad growing up like this dude taught me hard work perseverance pushing yourself and I just that day I went for or the, the next day that day I cried like a punk ass bitch all day I cried and I was I'm not ashamed of it um the next day I posted on my Instagram I I said 
I'm going on a 24 mile bike ride and then I'm going to do an eight mile run. And that's exactly what I did. And then that proved to me that this distance I was capable of training. So I had two months left and I went, I start going ham. I mean, 40 mile bike rides followed by 10 K's swimming. I, rem I remember endlessly. this. I remember I was this. going crazy. This was early 2020 yep. and then boom, yep. COVID happened. And COVID shut everything down two weeks to three weeks before my event. So I had put in all that work and I was going to get none of that glory that I wanted so bad, but I didn't quit. I kept pushing and it gave me another year to learn and grow and build. So I kind of went back to doing my own thing and left the triathlons alone a little bit. And then I started getting ready for the Kerrville triathlon, which I just did. And that one got postponed. So I had no triathlon the whole year of 2020. So then 2021 came around and I just started hammering it again. And I was training at an even higher level. I figured out equipment that I was going to need that I wouldn't have had the last year because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I, I figured out eating and hydrating and eating on the bike and making sure you were completely like nourished throughout the race. I learned so much more that I didn't have knowledge of the first time around. So it was almost like it was meant to be. What, and then, what is it that you learned? What is it that so you like, learned? Like when it comes out, to nutrition. Oh, nutrition. Or just, just in general, what is it that you learned over that period? Well, sodium is a huge deal in those races, which I knew that already. Like I knew I was going to need like a salt chew or something, but I didn't understand the amount of calories that you burn <laughs> when you cycle. Oh, like yeah. I just didn't understand. And when you swim that long of a distance and when you cycle, so I just didn't, it didn't like register to me that part didn't register and so have, sorry that? have you ever tried uh like the liquid ID, iv packets i or? i do know okay uh, yeah i've been on that so yeah dude. i've learned those game I've changer learned, yeah goose and blocks and gummies and um i usually which a lot of people don't know but they know now um i usually would take like a an edible like a thc edible before my bike rides and okay. my runs um, and what that does is it kind of lets me get off in my imagination on my rides and my runs. And I kind of just am happy and I don't feel a lot of pain. Um, and so I kind of enjoy it a little more. It's a little more fun, a little more peaceful. I feel a little more aware, actually. Um, and my music sounds good. And it's just, you know, okay. you're, stone. you're trying to, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I was hitting these these crazy workouts. So I started realizing like, oh, I get it. You got to eat. You got to um you got to uh, make sure that you're fueled up because you get to the run and you start to cramp real bad, right? Right in that run portion. And, and it, you're basically, your time is dependent on how long it takes before you start cramping. Cause you know, your cardio is there. You train for that. Yep. So it's just, it's really, a, a, it's, it's really the battle is with nutrition during the race. It's the only thing that you have. If, if you're not nourished enough, you're going to face problems. So, um, so take us through the race. Like what, what are you doing during it? Like, what are you eating? So before I even get to the water, um, I wake up in the morning, I eat, I ate like three bagels, six bananas, three bowls of like two, two bowls of oatmeal. Um, like just a ton of shit, like okay. food, the carbs, yeah, yeah. like Put it, putting it and, down. Yeah. Putting it down and trying to get as many calories. I'm like, trying to get at least 1500 to 2000 calories in my body before I even start. I was like, feel, I wanted okay. to feel heavy going and in. How, how long before the race started that you were, you were prepping this food, like how, or prepping I mean, yourself. I just got up at like 3 AM and the, the, the gates, uh, the first transition opened at five 30. Oh shit. Okay. So not that so, long. Right. So I ate, but the race doesn't start till seven. Okay. 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 So they let you in transition so you can set your bag up and stuff. Cause your bike's already there overnight. Gotcha. Um, so they let you in transition. So you set your bag up and make sure that your, your stuff's there, put your wet suit on or whatever. Um, and I was late actually. Uh, yeah, I was fucking late. I showed up late as fuck. I was pissed at myself and I'm like running. They're like, all right, we're already moving out to the water and fucking food slushing around in my stomach. Yeah. That's what, so, that's what I was wondering. Okay. Yeah. I was like, Oh shit. You know, I, ate too too soon or too close to the race yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so uh i ate a ton then and then literally when you get out of the water you're hungry already okay because it was like it required that much energy and it's galveston so it's shitty water 
Um, <laughs> your breathing is completely thrown off. So that's another thing is like doing more open water swimming is going to help me because your breathing gets completely trashed because in a pool, the pool is very calm. Like you're swimming in a pool, there's little waves, but you can get your breathing right. One, two, breathe, you know, breathe. But in the ocean or the bay, the waves go up a lot, a lot higher. So when you turn your head to breathe, you get a bunch of shit salt water from fucking dirty ass fish and nasty ass Galveston Bay. You know what I'm saying? So you try to breathe, but you can't get your head over the wave. So you realize like, oh, I got to pull my body up way higher okay. out of the water. So it's like, you learn that immediately when you jump in, you're like, oh, I fucked up. Didn't try for this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, <laughs> all right. Cause that's when most people quit. They'll be in that water and they look at the buoys and it just looks like fucking, I'm never going to get there. And that's when most people throw their hand up and they're like, come get me, get me out of this shit. And you know, um, I guess we but should explain me. what an Iron Man is for those for those who may not know. So it's just uh, well, I did a half Iron Man because it was my my first one, which mm-hmm. most people don't do a fucking half Iron Man or an Iron Man period, their very first triathlon ever. No, um, definitely. So not. there's four uh, triathlons. There is a sprint, which is usually a 300 to 400 meter swim. Then you get out, you do a 10 to 15 mile bike ride, and then you do a uh, 5k run okay. or two, two mile to a three mile run. Okay. And that's called a sprint. And then there's the quarter try, which is now like the big boys in the quarter. So that one is a 1000 meter swim, which is, we just said 800 and 1000 is fucking That's far, a swim. You know that's a saying? swim. You're in the water for a minute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's a 1,000 meter swim. It's a 29 mile bike ride, which is quite a distance. Yep, yep. And then it is a 10K, which is a six point, you know, two mile run. Which is still good. <laughs> which is that all that is pretty intense. And it's yeah. going to take you close. You know, if you're good, you can do it in under, you know, if you're really in good shape, you can go under three hours. If you are just a monster, you can go under 230. And if you are just even more of a monster, you'll go under two or get really close. Um, and then we have the half triathlon which is the big dog triathlon which is a 1.2 mile swim it is a uh 56 mile bike ride and then it is a half marathon after all that so a 13 (laughs) mile run and this Um, is consecutive this is back to back guys this is back to back you got to get out of your transition as soon as possible or you're bullshitting you know what i'm saying you can tell the people who are sitting in transition long are scared Oh, you know dude, saying? I bet. I bet uh, you see those people like, oh, yeah. I'm like, he doesn't want to start this next journey because yeah. that water just kicked his fucking ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, so, yeah, so that's the big dog. And then you have the full. And the full Iron Man is the, it's like the god of all Iron Mans, right? Like it's, it's a, uh, a 2.4 mile swim um, or a 2.2 mile swim. And no, 2.4 mile swim. And then it is a 112 mile bike ride. And then it is a full marathon afterwards, 26.2 miles. People put stickers on their car for full marathons. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just for the marathon portion, just for the marathon part, the running (laughs) part, like you didn't have to swim or bike for seven hours before you did that. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So, um, so that's the big daddy of them all and that's the only one that qualifies you to get the iron man tattoo which is literally the only fucking reason i'm doing the full iron man ah! um in april 22 <laughs> it's because i'm like i need to walk around and fucking have that tattoo on my calf and Hell the yeah. thing the thing about iron man's and they do it in a lot of triathlons but the iron man is notorious for this like the older people they write their names on their calves so when they pass you, you know you're getting your fucking ass whooped by an older person. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that's like, they, I don't know how they describe it, but it seems like a flex to me. And I can't fucking wait till I'm 60. That's a and flex, And I put dog. fucking 60 on my calves. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm 60. And I just like speed by some little punk ass 20 year old. And I'm like, oh yeah, your little fucking ass is not the same <laughs> toughness I got. So yeah, <laughs> going way off track, man. I'm fucking edibles but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's that's th- those are iron mans um and the two the two the seven the 70.3 and the 140.6 are iron mans and they usually do them in 
pretty tough places and you have a cutoff of when you can finish. So they only give you a certain amount of time to complete it. So there is a time okay. cap. Okay. And they don't, they will put a did not finish next to your name Oof. online for everybody Oof. to see if you don't make it past the finish line. Uh, so it's not, it's not called the Ironman participation. Yeah. It's called the fucking Ironman. So yeah. you're only going to get a medal if you finished. Um, so Fuck. yeah. Um, and those, 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 so those are pretty badass. And uh, now I'm, you know, learning more about endurance. I'm upgrading my bike and shit and I'm starting to learn and I'm starting to process it all. Cause it's, it's going to take me five to six years to get good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And not to mention I work all the time. So to find time to tra training for a triathlon is not like training CrossFit. It's not like bodybuilding. You're training for a long ass time doing very uncomfortable shit for a long ass time you know what i'm saying and like crossfit you can get it done in an hour you know what i'm saying you can get your workout in you can get your wad in you can get your stretching in and your foam rolling in within an hour if you're if you're busting your ass yeah. um and bodybuilding it's like yeah it, you might be long but you're not uncomfortable sure. you hit something for like you know 15 to 20 seconds and then it, it pumps you all up and then you rest for a little bit and you can chill you can check your phone and shit like when I'm on the fucking side of the road and there's 18 wheelers going by, there's no check in your fucking phone. <laughs> like, and your legs are on fire, <laughs> your torch and the wind is blowing you left and right on your bike. And you're just like, what the fuck? And then some fucking 50 year old lady passes you by on her bike. And you're like, God <laughs> damn, am I really that bad? Like, am I really like, are these people really that much better? So, yeah. So I've kind of felt fallen in love with, with these things. Like they, I like truly am falling in love with the sport of triathlons and I'm not ever trying to chase being number one or top this or top that. I don't have the time. I love my gym. I love all that, but um, I love the com competition and the battle you have with your mind and yourself during these things like that moment of this sucks really bad. And then convincing yourself to finish and to not quit or not stop running or not stop cycling is like the gratification when you're done with that is like it's like the chills that you'll never like you just you can't it like happens so fast but it feels so long and it's just something you cannot describe like I can't describe how it feels it's very emotional like you cross the finish line you're like man for the last five months six months I didn't drink alcohol I didn't smoke weed I didn't party. I didn't do anything besides stay focused to this one thing that I just finished and completed and I did it. And it's like, again, it goes back to like, you made a deal with yourself and you kept your end of the bargain. So now you trust yourself even more to go even further. And so now people are starting to call you crazy, but you take it as a compliment because you're like, yeah, I am kind of crazy <laughs> because I, I mean, yeah, I did that. And then, and then you see people doing ultra- Runs, yeah bro. Or running 100 miles or you see guys swim 1700 and so it doesn't make you feel so you're like this is just the beginning soon i probably will try to ride my bike from california to new york you know what i'm saying or, or try to do something crazy yeah um, i can feel all that coming on now because i'm like well if that human can do it why can't i do it yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying or, or or whatever so this this year coming up i'm so focused on being good i have uh, Decafit coming up. I have uh, High Rocks coming up. I have the hat. So January 15th is Decafit, which do you know what that is? I don't. I don't. So I know I'm getting way off track. No, you're, hey, uh, no this I'm, is a good podcast. I love it all. My ass, I love it all, dude. You know keep going. Saying? Keep going. I'm um, here for it. <laughs> so Decafit coming up is like a competition where you do 10 events, like a 500 meter ski or a 500 meter row or 20 uh okay. road ball sit-ups or a sled push but in between each event you do a 500 meter run okay okay and everybody competes in a heat like it's a track meet okay um and then high rocks is similar to deca fit but it's a 1000 meter run between everything and the weight is way heavier and the ski in the row is 1000 meters instead of 500 meters so it's a lot more intense of a competition um, and people are doing that shit in like an hour. It's crazy how fast these guys, these guys are monsters. And anyways, um, and then, so, so high rocks is March 26th. 
Okay. Which is the day before my birthday. One week after High Rocks, I'm in Galveston to do the 70.3 again. Then 20 days after the 70.3, I'm going to do the full Ironman in the Woodlands, Texas. Um, so you both I'm back back to back within the same month. I'm going to do two why? Ironmans in the same month. Why? I that's the thing. Why, Sean? That, why? That is why. That, <laughs> is why. that reason is why. That reason. That's the reason right there. I'm just. <laughs> I'm going to do it because I've already said I was going to do it. And now I'm going to feel like a punk ass bitch to myself if I don't do it. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's what I was. So the ultra marathons, that's what I was going to bring up, too. You have any aspiration to do a hundred miler or are you familiar with the Moab 256? Um, yeah, I know. So I know the the ultra marathons the moab is that just running or is there other stuff no, no no no. the moab was straight running it was uh they did it 2019 they did a 256 mile trail run in the mountains of utah and uh the woman who won it courtney dewalter she beat second place by 10 hours damn 10 fucking hours I mean, she, she was she already slept, resting and eating. she slept 31 minutes or no, excuse me, 21 minutes. One nap was 20 minutes. The second nap was one minute. And wait, when, when, okay. How many, how many miles was this? 256. And how many days did it take her? I think she, oh, okay. Hold on. Before I'm talking out my ass again, let's see. Courtney, you, Walter. Yeah, 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 dude. It, that's another one. She was on the she was on the Joe Rogan show. Uh, do Walter Moab. Oh, it's called the Moab two forty. Excuse me. Um, two hundred and thirty eight miles. It took her two days, nine hours, and fifty nine minutes. She, oh my god. She finished. Yeah, she was faster than any of the men in the pack, beating the second place finisher by more than ten hours. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, first off, she probably forgot that she was live, like existing. <laughs> she went somewhere really special <laughs> and, or super uh, dark or super dark. <laughs> I mean, that she like sold her soul to, Dude. to go there. I mean, that and sounds crazy. And when you listen to the podcast, this is her nutrition. She literally fucking just eats Doritos and Taco Bell and bullshit, bro. She's a oh freak. My. God. <laughs> Look, I'll I'll be honest with you. I am never gonna fucking do a Moab 240. Okay. <laughs> like, and I'm telling you that from the bottom of my heart. Uh I am not doing that shit for one second. Um, you don't want to run for two days, nine no, hours, bro, and 59 I minutes. I don't know if you've seen my story sometimes on Instagram. I fucking hate running. I think I think running is by far the worst shit ever. I, I hate running so much that whenever I have to do it, I'm literally talking shit to myself <laughs> before I run. Every time I run, I'm like, this fucking sucks. Why are you doing this dumbass shit? It's only beating up your knees. It's fucking up your ankles. It's beating up your body. I'm like, I hate running so much, but I just do it because it's, it's a part of the damn Ironman. I love swimming and I love to cycle now. Those are like, I love doing those things. I'll do those at any time. But when it comes to the part where I have to run, I'm like, fuck it. I'll just tough my, I'll tough it out. Mm. <laughs> I'll just I, like training. I trained less running in the last Ironman I did than anything. I was, I, I was like, uh, when it gets to that point, I'll just, my mind will take over and I'll just get it done. But you're still out there busting out 10, 13 milers. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. But I mean, you still do it. Yeah. I have to. If you want, you, you, still I mean, do you get it. out there to do a half marathon after you went 56 miles on the bike that ain't no joke no that's no nah, that's bullshit you can keep that to yourself yeah. uh it says in 2017 she set the record for the longest run in 24 hours at 155 miles that's absurd that's absurd that's literally insane um he's running like fucking nine minute miles or some shit yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So for the Moab, it says that she averaged a 14.6 minute mile and 97 miles per day. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that's absurd. Uh, so that's, that's another one, uh, another super cool one for you to uh, geek out on. And then Colin O'Brady, 
This is my uh, my last one. Uh, Colin O'Brady, he became the first person to uh, cross Antarctica unassisted, meaning that everything that he needed to go from point A to point B, he brought with him at point A. No one dropped him off anything in between. So he brought, he packed all of his meals, all of his hydration, the whole nine yards when he arrived and made it there all the way to point B with no parachute attached to his back. Cause a lot of, some people will do this and they'll put like a parachute on their back and kind of glide across the snow, which is still yeah. fucking crazy anyways. Right. But he did it. No parachute, just walking sticks. Shit. And he made it all the way across. Um, uh, I can't remember how far it was, but it was uh, something, something silly. Um, but yeah, he made it all the way across. Oh, wait, excuse me. He was on skis. So he's on, he's on a uh, cross country skis. Uh, okay. but yeah, so he makes it across unassisted. Everything he brought with him was packed with him. And then he turned around and, and, uh, right afterwards he got back from there and someone said, someone asked him if he wanted to do like a five man rowing team through devil's, I think it's devil's passage down there in Antarctica. And yeah. then he did that right afterwards uh so those those are some good ones for you to check out those are some uh those are some just freaks yeah that's wild man that's freaks, wild dude. i'm not at that level yet i'm, I'm working on it i'm, but I'm you, not but, there but you get but like you have uh damn it it's it's still nuts though to say you've done a half a half iron man is fucking insane yeah yeah i think the, so too the average i can't person, believe i did it the average person cannot do that no I can't go out there and do a half Iron Man. There's no fucking way. Yeah, you can. But not right. Not at this exact moment. Like you might not make the cutoff, but you can the, do it. But yeah, the you, swimming would kill time. me. The swimming would kill yeah. me. Yeah. I could do the cycling, maybe. The run a half, I could run a half. And the, the cycling, I could probably maybe survive half of that. Just like 25 rough. miles. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that swim, fuck that. I could not do a mile in 1.2 miles. I know that for a fact. Yeah, my just, swimming is trash well if you get a good wetsuit man you kind of float a little bit but <laughs> you still can get out I'm there calling and drown. bullshit yeah <laughs> look, look up i i don't, I don't know if I'm, I'm right on this but look at look up like i think there's been like 117 people that have died from iron man's since like 1990 or something uh, uh, iron man deaths oh shit there's a whole goddamn list whoa two people oh. died on the bike damn Oh, that's um, crazy. Sad heart attack. It must have been a heart attack or something. Hopefully. Well, not hopefully. Oh, yeah. Card. Nope. Damn. But they fell. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> right off the bat, since 1986. 1986, some pers- uh, person drowned. Oh, right yeah, after that, that happened. Right after that, a month later, someone got hit by a car. Wow. Where was that not blocked off at? Yeah, that's in Missouri. So misery. Hmm. Uh, right after that, a year later, someone died of a heart attack on the bike. A lot of cardiac arrest. A lot. That sounds about right. A lot of cardiac arrest. Yep. Because then you're what? taking in caffeine, and you're like, you know, it, it, yeah. I could imagine cardiac arrest happening. Yeah, there's there's a be. lot of cardiac arrest. I see some mm-hmm. seizures um there's definitely a lot of drowning oh this one's terrible Eat strokes. slammed into guardrail at bottom of a hill oh yeah that sounds pretty bad that's i'd probably crush and kill you <laughs> depending on how fast you're going 40 miles an hour down a hill and you couldn't get that turn right or slow down holy shit yeah. dude i think uh wow there's a a good amount of death since 1986 there's a good amount of fatalities there uh doing iron mm. man's <laughs> Hey, but man, I'm not going to lie. I'm not trying to jinx myself, but that is a pretty good way to go out. If you're going to go so, out. You're a bad out. You're that's you're, okay. So it's funny that you bring that up because, uh, I'm very, I have very much a similar mindset in the sense of like, people are like, why do you go skydiving? What if you die? If I die skydiving, that's way better than dying in a bullshit ass car accident. You know how pissed I would be or die or die at work. Bruh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Fuck. Some guy that. comes in mad and just shoots up the office. Dude. I mean, <laughs> and that's and that's how I go out. I'd be pissed. Yeah. I'd much rather die skydiving, or I have I I low key have this obsession now. I don't know if I could ever physically actually get myself to do it, but I want to go base jumping. Oh yeah. I, I want to go base jumping, and uh, if that's how I go, I, I I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm not trying to go out at work or in a car or. Uh, by cancer or at something. Gas station. Yeah, or cancer yeah. at a gas station. Like, no, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I'm trying to go out doing something that's fun. Badass. Yeah. yeah Saving right? babies out of a burning building or some yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do yeah. that shit. <laughs> I come out with like a fucking puppy and a baby, but I have smoke inhalation and I right. fucking get them to safety. And <laughs> you're just make, char- the, the, you're charred. Yeah. You're on the fire, baby. but they're not. <laughs> The baby grows up to be the quarterback for the Falcons and wins the Super Bowl. They do a 30 for 30 on me. Yeah, that's the, that's the way I want to go. The out. man Fuck who that. saved the Falcons Super Bowl winning quarterback. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, for, but for real, all jokes aside, though, but for real. But for real, I, you can sum that up by just go live your life. If there's something that that's you want to do, go fucking do it. Go just do it. Anything. to yourself, man. It, dude, uh, that. I can I understand that feeling because doing doing the Muay Thai tournament that was something that was on my list and you said something right. earlier about we don't pl- like we're not playing in here like we're not playing a game and uh, yeah. we say that we say that at Muay Thai all times like we're not playing Muay you don't play Muay Thai no like, you can't play fight no, no when we're when we're sparring you get kicked we're, in the head yeah, there's nothing yeah, fun yeah. and playful about that shit you yeah. can't play Muay Thai like you can't play kickboxing like that's not a thing like we're not in right. here doing cardio kickboxing we're in here to learn how to fuck someone up and to not get fucked up that's what we're doing we're not playing muay thai and uh so you know i i get what you're saying when you say that and doing the fight was something that was on my bucket list for a while i always had this uh inclination or this thought um this feeling that i would be pretty decent at it like i just always like i never i never grew up fighting um i'm a pretty chill dude you gotta really really pe- press my buttons to even get a slight reaction out of me right um you can talk all the shit you want to me i don't give a fuck if you now if you, if you fuck with somebody i'm with that's a different story but to right. me you know, like whatever dude so all through high school like nobody could ever get a rise from me it's like whatever um but i always felt like if i had to we could we could, could do it we could do it yeah. if we needed to right right and so a uh, few years back, maybe th- about five years ago, uh, my friend was holding pads for me. We were doing some boxing drills and he was like, you know, you, you're pretty good. You're pretty good at this. You never trained before. I was like, no, not really. You know, I just watched the movies. And he was like, yeah. you're, pre- you're pretty decent at this. Like you might have, you might have like, you know, you can do this. And I never, th- I didn't think of anything of it. I didn't train. I didn't go take, I didn't go any further with it than, um, COVID hit and COVID was kind of that COVID was kind of that thing where it's like all right dude I'm tired of waiting for other people to do something with me I'm tired of uh mm-hmm. waiting for other people I'm gonna go do something that I want to do right and even though it started off with I was like hey I asked one of my friends I was like hey you want to go try out this Muay Thai gym with me he was like yeah I'll go with you I was like all right bet so Tuesday rolls around we're supposed to go do our free trial and I was like, hey, are we going tonight? He was like, nah, man, I can't make it. And I was like, damn, all right, let's go Thursday. He was like, all right, bet, we'll go Thursday. Two days later, Thursday rolls around. I'm like, hey, man, we gonna make it? And he was like, ah, dude, I can't go tonight. I was like, fuck this, I'm going by myself. Yeah. And I'm very much, I'm very much a person, and I hate this about myself, but I'm very much a person who wants to do everything with somebody else. Yeah. And so this was, this was kind of a big step for me, and it, you know, it might sound lame to somebody else, but uh, this was a big step for me to go do something that I wanted to do by myself. So last October, uh, it was a year ago, uh, not too long, a couple days ago, and walked in there, I was like, fuck it, I want to do this. And I walked in there, did the class, signed up that day, and then they're like, hey, there's a tournament in April. So it was about six months, six, seven months. And I signed up. I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. And signed up for it, and we did it. We went there, you know, yeah, it was class C, yeah, amateur, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Doesn't but, matter. But I went in there. I did it. 
I fought twice. I fought on Saturday and I fought on Sunday. I won both. Damn. Won the belt. Damn. Nice, uh, bro. And today found out that the November tournament has been pushed to January, meaning that I might be able to compete again. Uh, I, I, I kind of have the itch to do it. Um, I think the only hesitation that I have is I don't want to uh, fuck myself up even more than what it already is. Like my nose is my nose is fucked. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, fuck it. I think I, that's just what I want to do. Like, it's so it, there's nothing like it. Do it's it. like how, it's like how you were yeah. saying with Iron Man. It's like when you've crossed that finish line, it was just like this big this like I set a goal. I told mm-hmm. myself I was going to do it. I put in the work. I did it, and I completed it. Yeah. When when my hand was raised and they put the belt around me, I was like, "Damn!" I set a goal. I I put in the work. I did it. Now I got this belt, and it was super cool. Uh, it was a, it was a really cool feeling. I had the same feeling a couple couple weeks ago when I signed for my house that I'm selling. Um, about a Congrats, investment. Bro. Thank you. I bought an investment property, flipped it. Uh, we're currently under contract. That'll be sold here in a couple of weeks. Um, and then going to flip that hopefully into an Airbnb or a rental property. That's the goal. That's the thought process. And uh, I had that same feeling when I signed for the house. Um, Cause like you growing up, we didn't, we didn't have too much money. Um, you know, my dad made a my dad made a decent living, but mom didn't work. She stayed at home, took care of us. And there's no backup. There's no backup for me. If my shit hits zero, that's, that's my shit hits zero. Right. Like there ain't no, there ain't nobody coming to save the day, you know? Yeah. And uh, so when I signed for that house, I was like, damn, dude, I did this. Like I saved up the money. I made those sacrifices. I made that down payment. I put the money down and you know, like you took the risk, did it, you know, we did it. Yeah. And, uh, it paid off. It did. It did. It has paid off. You know, we flipped the house for a pretty good chunk of change. Um, more money than I ever thought I'd see at once. Uh, and so it's cool. And so getting the news today, the tournament getting moved to January, I'm like, ah, shit. The pressure's on. Uh oh. And uh, yeah, it'd be, whew, it'd be a good one. Um, get a chance to go 4 0, 5 0, get another belt. Uh, yeah. So uh, so I'm like, might have to. I would do it. I would do it if I were Yeah, I know. I might, might have to. regret. They say you should regret what you did, not what you didn't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I respect that. That's a good one. I like that. Um, and, yeah, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's cool, dude. And a lot of people a lot of people enjoyed it. A lot of people enjoyed watching me do that. Um, posted both of the fights on Instagram. Both people. A lot of people enjoyed oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Shit's fun, dude. Yeah, There's nothing that was like classic, it. Classic, bro. That was tight. <laughs> There's that nothing like it, man. You gotta have some balls to do that, man. <laughs> you gotta have some balls to fight. To, ah, to did you that, have to, be... to step in the ring with another dude who's trying to hurt you? You gotta have some balls. Dude, there's. I mean, I don't think there's any. I don't think it's any different than doing an Iron Man, bro. Like that's you're I mean, you're putting is. you're putting yourself. At least someone else is putting you in pain. <laughs> You're putting yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. through that pain. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, it's a straight up. It's a war within. It's a war within. Yeah, sure. dude. Uh, yeah. And I, pre-fight, I was in this. I was in this mental space that I guess my my biggest hesitation is I don't know if I can reachieve that mental space. Pre-fight, I was in this mental space that was just unstoppable. Yeah, I couldn't be stopped. Like I went into there like I had been fighting for years. I sat in the tournament, the warm up room calm as hell i'm getting my hands wrapped chill as fuck um we're in the second fight the championship fight and uh, i fight a guy named jonathan jones i'm still cool with this dude and uh he he hits so fucking hard and uh, yeah, after, yeah. The, after the first round i get back to my corner and my coach is like all right you need to do this you need to do that you need to... i was like brandon 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 Brand. calm down real quick i need to tell you something this motherfucker hits so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and there it is. Yeah, it, was, it was cool, man. I enjoyed it. Oh, um, that's badass. It was fun. Badass. There's really, there's really nothing quite like it. It's, it's the most humbling thing I've ever done because oh, man. the person who hits the hardest there in sparring is a 17 year old girl, 18 year old girl now. Just yeah. be lighting us up. 
she got a right hook that's fucking yeah killer <laughs> she's trained that she's dude, thrown a lot of bro, time someone is going some man or some dude is gonna test her in college and she gonna drop somebody it's bad his ass. yeah <laughs> yeah that's good to know man that's kind of like that's kind of like um like that makes you feel good knowing that you know when girls know self-defense they can defend oh, yeah. themselves it's, oh yeah dude. yeah and it, it's good i mean we have a we have a good amount of girls who spar uh at least three spar all the time two fight consistently um they fight again here in uh six four weeks they fight november 6th uh okay. this will be like their shit seven or tenth fight in the last two years mm-hmm. so they fight all the time regularly um and the biggest thing in the gym is like like it's just fighters in here there's no men there's no women because those women will light your ass up you go in there thinking like oh yeah. girl, i'm gonna take it easy we're the yeah. same way we don't do uh I don't allow people to call push-ups women or girl push-ups where they do yeah. them on their knees. We don't, I don't allow that shit in my gym. I'm like, that's first off, it's the grading. We're not going to, nobody's going to be called girl push-ups because they're on their knees. Like second off, I have girls in my gym that would absolutely fucking torch dudes in push-ups. <laughs> torch them. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so we all, we all doing the same shit. Hell yeah. So. Hell yeah, man. That's how you do it, dude. Look. Yeah. uh i really enjoyed this i really appreciate you for doing this please no doubt, man. shout everything out tell everybody where they can find you the whole nine yards man for sure i will most definitely bro i i i i i, I, I can't be found you got to know somebody to know you ain't never gonna find me i stay in my little bat cave and i work out all day so <laughs> unless you do that you'll never find me we'll never cross paths our energies will never meet so <laughs> i only cross paths with real ones so if you've met me it's because you probably destined to be great as well um and i'm i'm in san antonio i work out all the time y'all can hit me up my my business name is Sykesercise. Um, my Instagram name is Sykesercise. My email is Sykesercise at gmail.com. So if anybody wants to, to hit me up and wants to come get in some real work, y'all let me know. Um, I, I loved doing this pro- this podcast. This is one of the best podcasts I've done. The, the oh, conversation yeah, was light, that. but it was fun and it was enjoyable. And I, I was able to open up and and kind of talk about myself a little bit. And I feel good about this podcast. And it was good to, to finally talk to you, bro, and get this done. And Hopefully we can get one live soon. Hell and yeah, dude. Hopefully Hell I yeah. can come in and, and visit y'all's gym, the CrossFit gym, and then you can come in and visit my gym and set up that 1,000 meter row uh, against your boy. Okay. All hey, right. yeah, we gotta we we gotta figure we gotta figure something out. I gotta come down there and I gotta put my I gotta put my time on the board. I gotta get yeah, yeah. I gotta get through PT. I gotta get my shoulder. I gotta get my my shit right. Uh, right, right. Once I get through PT feeling once i can get back consistently working out man what i'll, I'll right. come and put my name on that board that's what's up bro i'm coming to put my name to that. on that board dude uh, yeah. <laughs> i got you. on that board those board the names they stay forever man they hell stay forever. yeah dude i got you man hey i again i really appreciate you i appreciate Thank this you, this was a lot of fun it was great to finally talk to you finally meet you sort of zoom ish sure, sure um sure. We'll definitely have to get one in person, dude. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Right, and guys, man, we, will check, we will check y'all next time. Thank you. And All everyone right, have a good easy, night. Man.